Okie doke, welcome back. So now we've got everything in the uh, data table that we're going to need. So which we did in the last video, which was just a little quick, just for visual. So, But I haven't made the actual blueprint actors for it yet. So we're going to do that in this one. So I'm going to right click and create a new folder real quick. This is going to be the items. This is where the health potion and the mana potion are going to go. So I'm going to select both of them and move them here. I'm going to right click create another folder. This will be weapons and another new folder. It will be armor. So now what we need to talk about is actually getting ready to start picking these up. No, 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 I'm stupid. Alright, so we need to create the actual blueprint <laughs> class. So we're going to find the base interactable, create the child blueprint class. This one is going to be, I got the mana potion and the health potion. So this is going to be the rusted sword underscore BP. And what I'm going to be using for the swords is from the infinity blade asset, or infinity blade weapons pack. Now, what you'll notice about these weapons is that they are all skeletal meshes. It doesn't have any static meshes, but if you recall when we set up the blueprint actor, we only included a static mesh. The reason we did that is because these skeletal meshes, it's hard to really do the, the physics when you drop it. I want it to be able to do... like these right here to where you pick it up and when you drop it it falls to the ground harder to do with skeletal meshes uh, but we're going to convert these into static meshes so I'm going to find my first sword that I use which is a kind of a rusted looking that's not it that's not it what's that it that is it. Alright, so I'm going to use sword 16 first. This is going to be my character's starting weapon, the first one that they'll find. So I'm going to drag it into the world so that I have a quick reference to get back to it. I'm going to right click, and I'm going to edit it. Now this will bring up this window, and I just want to click make static mesh. So for this I'm just going to go to the third person blueprint, blueprints, interaction system and I'm gonna put it right under the weapons so rusted sword underscore static mesh SM static mesh and I'll save it there so I can close out of this and now go find it so here it is but the only problem with this is if I drop it out It ain't gonna do nothing. It's just gonna float. So it can't have physics just yet because it doesn't have any collision set up. So if I open it up real quick and then you'll see. If I show a simple collision, there's nothing on it. Now the way we're gonna get this is it because it needs a simple collision to be able to interact with physics. Static meshes do. So under the collision icon, yeah, you can add like a capsule and it'll automatically wrap it around. But when you drop that, it's just going to roll away because it's a perfectly round capsule. So I'm going to remove the collision. I'm going to click this auto convex collision. And I found that basically the default works. So once you apply it, then you'll see it's got all this green box around it. That's the new collision it just applied. So now, if I drag this out and I hit simulate physics, it should, yeah, it just falls right down. So that's simple as that to do that. 
So now back out in the interaction system where we created the rusted sword. Under the item, we can set it to that rusted sword mesh. And I'm going to leave it just like that. But under its self up here, I am going to set its name to the rusted sword. That way it'll pull the right info from our data table. And then I'm going to drop it under the weapons, say move here. Now I'll do the shield, same thing. I'm going to create a child blueprint of the base interactable. This is the wood shield underscore BP. And for the shield, it's part of this weapons pack that is not actually associated with the Infinity Blade, but is also free. So I'm just going to type in weapon free. Mm -hmm. Oh, free fantasy weapon. So this is the shield right here. So it's this free fantasy weapon sample. And so that's the shield I'm going to use. So back in the interaction system, wood shield. Now this one does have, let's see, pretty sure, it, pretty sure it had a static mesh. Yeah, the shield already had a static mesh, so it's, it'll automatically fall and do like it's supposed to. So we don't have to convert it. But what we do have to do is go find that one that we just made and set the static mesh. So I'll set the item to the shield. Then I'll highlight this and set the name to wooden shield. Then I'll drop this into the armor. So now that we have a few items, we need to be able to pick them up. But only way to do that is with a blueprint interface, which will allow this blueprint to communicate across to another blueprint that also utilizes the interface. So I'm going to right click and under blueprints, go to blueprint interface, and this will be interact underscore BPI. I'm going to open it up and you'll see over in the top right it has these functions. It automatically highlights and lets you rename the first one. I'm just going to call it interact. And that's pretty much it. That's all that's needed with that. But in order to use it we have to apply it to both our character and any item that we want to be able to interact with. So I'm going to open up my player blueprint and under class settings at the top. So normally it's on class defaults but we want class settings. So under interfaces we're going to add that interact blueprint interface. Now we're going to do the same thing under our base interactable. Because whatever we do to this one will also happen to our rusted sword and our shield and our potions and all that. So I'm going to go to the class settings. Under interfaces, I'm going to add that interact BPI one more time. And now in the event graph of the base interactable, I'm going to right click and event interact. So we'll add event event interact. And it should say from interact BPI. So that's all we need to do right there. Because in the next one, how long is this one going? This has only been 10 minutes. All right, let's keep going. So let's set up inside the player blueprint a function to start picking up these items. So over here under the components above the variables, you see now we've got this interface with this function on it, but above that is this function we want to add that says pick up item. Over on the right in the details panel we want to add an input 
that will tell the player what item they just picked up. So it'll be item info and it'll be an item info struct. So now when we go back to the base interactable on event interact, so the character, the player is standing over it, trying to interact with it, trying to pick it up, we will cast to the player blueprint. So it'll cast over to there. We want to get the character. Get player character. Probably type get player. Yeah, get player brings it up easier. Get player character. And then as the player, we want to pick up item. So casting over will let us access that function we just created. And then we just want to pass through the item info that we're trying to pick up. And remember, since we did it with the data table, all these will automatically do that and pull the right info as long as you've been updating the item name appropriately so ooh, I don't think I have have I wood shield what did I yeah wood shield I did all right all right um, Now in the base interactable, we also once it's picked up, we want to destroy it from the world because we don't want them to be able to pick up the same item multiple times. So we'll drag from the pickup item, we will destroy the actor. So you want to make sure this is at the very end of anything you're trying to do, otherwise it's just not going to work out very well. So let's save real quick. And then in the next one, we'll go through the process of getting the character's inventory set up and then adding the item to the inventory, checking to see if there's more than one already and all that jazz. So I will see y'all in the next one. Bye-bye.